Testing, testing, one, two, three, we're seeing if this is going to work. The name of this video is, how to build your own PC. And I'm going to try to do it in 10 minutes. I'm not sure if I can, but it, it could be done in 10 minutes because the only thing you have to know about building a PC is the anatomy of a motherboard. This is a motherboard. It's a thing that looks like a big pizza pie. And there's seven or eight or 10 uh, important little areas on it, which I want to go over with you which uh, will enable you to build your own PC under any circumstance. Uh, motherboards are the main and the only component of a computer. I know you hear a lot of people that say, oh, well, I got a RAM and I got a hard drive. and uh, Forget it. The only part of a computer that is worth talking about that everything plugs into is the motherboard. And a motherboard is usually square or rectangular. It always has a big square area prominently seen somewhere near the middle, which is for the CPU. There's usually a bracket around that, which is for a fan that mounts on top of the CTU, CPU. There's usually a couple of little slots here near the uh, socket, which is for the RAM. Uh, in the old days, uh, as with everything on the motherboard, slots were bigger and less dense. Now they are smaller and more dense in terms of numbers of connectors. Uh, sometimes motherboards are named like socket A, socket B, you know, both Intel and AMD, the main producers of CPUs, have their own proprietary reasons for motherboards. Sometimes they're named after the number of pins. Well, let's just say that the most important feature of the CPU on the motherboard is the socket. So this one is a fairly uh, up-to-date motherboard. It's made by the Asus company, A-S-U-S. -S. That's one of the premier makers of motherboards. A-Bit is also uh, known as a good maker of motherboards. They're a little more expensive, but they're generally higher quality. Uh, the first thing you do when you build a computer you take this little chip here. Uh, it's called the CPU. Let's take a look at it. And you put it onto the socket. That's the very first thing you do when you build a computer. So now it is impossible to put this CPU on incorrectly because if you look at the arrangement of these pins and the way they're slanted on certain edges or have notches in certain places like here or here, it's impossible to put the CPU on incorrectly. The, other th the thing you have to know is that you must not force this chip, the CPU, onto the socket. It must go by its own gravity. It must have zero gravity force, or ZIF. That's why these are called ZIF chips. Okay, so we got the uh, CPU onto the socket now. The next thing we do is we take this thing up here called the CPU fan, which you see, and we put it on top of the CPU. Now, sometimes you might want to put a little bit of grease. Uh, this is a little bit overdone, but you put a little thermal paste on top of the surface of the CPU. That way it is smooth and nice and flush with the bottom of the fan. And then you take the little edges of this fan, the bra bracket, and clip it on to whichever way it will clip on. It is impossible to put on a CPU or a fan wrong. Once that fan is on, you have the power for the fan, and that usually plugs very nicely into some obvious place on the motherboard that will have maybe a little sign that says CPU fan power. Sometimes there's a couple of them because you might want to add another fan to your system as well. People generally think that the more fans you add, the better your system will be. Uh, somebody once said that as time goes on, uh, computers will be more like televisions. I contend that as time goes on, computers have become more and more like refrigerators. Okay, so we have on our uh, CPU and we have on our fan. Now we take this stick of RAM here by various names and designations. And once again, as time goes on, the number of pins on the RAM has gotten denser and more numerous. This is 280-pin RAM. Sometimes they call them 
DIMS or SIMS for the socket. Sometimes they call it DDR, DDR2, DDR3 RAM. Forget the acronyms. They all look like a stick of gum. The important thing to remember is that there's a little notch in the middle and that has to correspond to the notch slightly off center of the RAM slots as well. It's impossible to put RAM in wrong nowadays. But the thing you should remember is whereas the CPU fell in on its own gravity, zero insertion force, the uh, RAM has to be crunched in real hard, almost like you're putting, pu putting the plunger down on a, a dynamite uh, uh, device. So this has to be pushed real hard. And notice these little uh, chips are always, the little notches are always off center. It's impossible to put RAM in wrong. Also remember that every motherboard has a certain capacity for RAM. So technically you could like, maybe put 8 or 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM on your motherboard. The motherboard might only have a capacity for 4. So sometimes you'll be wasting it. The other important thing to remember about RAM is that whatever stick you plug in, you're going to plug in another stick. It has to be exactly the same kind. Even though two RAMs are very good, they have to be exactly the same kind, hopefully the same brand, and that's the thing to remember about RAM. So we, now we have on our CPU the fan. The fan is plugged into the power. We have our RAM. And folks, we basically have our computer already. But we want to plug in our hard drive. We want to plug in our uh, DVD or CD-ROM and we're going to do that by taking the hard drive like we see here. I'm calling this the hard drive. It's really not the hard drive. It's just the back of the hard drive. And most hard drives nowadays have the SATA, S-A-T-A -A, or serial interface. And these, it's like a little L uh, connector and basically these five uh, little notches here uh, are the SATA plugs. And you take a wire or a SATA cable and you plug one end into the motherboard and you plug the other end into the back of the uh, SATA hard drive. Sometimes in the older days the hard drives were not SATA but they were what they call IDE which you see here on the left but now most of them are SATA. So if you're getting a new system it's probably going to be SATA which is the little L. Now the power for the uh, hard drive is usually a bigger L, but we'll get into power later. So we've at least connected physically our hard drive. Let's connect our CD-ROM. And our CD-ROM may very well be, this could be a DVD, a CD, a burner, a double layer burner, but nowadays still probably the most common type of interface is what they call IDE, which is this cable here, which corresponds to the IDE plug over here. So basically you just have to plug this into this. Notice that there's a little notch on one end here, which is not on the other end, so it's impossible to plug in anything wrong. And at this point I want to say, not only is it impossible to plug in things wrong, but I think it's also impossible to blow up your motherboard by plugging things in wrong. In the old days it was possible to blow up motherboards, I've done a few, but nowadays there are too many safety features. Okay, so we plugged in our CPU, our fan, our fan power, our RAM, our uh, hard drive, and our DVD or CD. Uh, there's only one more thing, actually two more things, that you have to plug into a computer to make it work. And one of them is a keyboard, which often plugs into this round PSU uh, plug over here. And the other one is a video. You have to plug in your monitor. And vi uh, videos have this 15-hole plug. Sometimes the video is mounted onto the motherboard or embedded, what they say. And sometimes it fits into this slot here called a PCI Express slot, which is usually right next to a couple of PCI slots. PCI Express is a little bit longer, a little bit denser. Here's a PCI Express 1 slot, which is short. You can put various devices in it, but you probably won't need to put anything in it. And then here's the PCI Express, where if you have an external video card, you plug that in. Otherwise, often, video is embedded onto the motherboard. Okay, so basically, we plugged in everything. We plugged in our CD-ROM. We plugged in our uh, 
backwards. We plugged in our hard drive. It took a SATA. We plugged our CD-ROM into the IDE. We put in our RAM. We put in our fan. We put in our CPU. We plugged in our uh, uh, keyboard. You could plug in a mouse into any of these six USB slots as well. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. Here's five. Here's six. And by the way, this is another SATA uh, plug here. It's exactly like these, only it's external. That's why it's called eSATA. So if you have an external hard drive that you want the SATA interface, it'll most likely be eSATA. Here's a, what they call a firewire, which is a similar type connection to a USB, but the USBs seem to have won out over the uh, firewires in terms of uh, popularity and convenience. Uh, these audio plugs here, remember one thing, your speakers or, uh, micro or um, earphones always plug into this light green or lime colored, colored plug, and your microphone always plugs into pink. These are the two ones you have to remember. The other ones you don't have to remember. These are for special digital uh, speakers, and that one is for an external line in which people rarely use. So, guess what, folks? Your computer is ready to fire up. What did we do? We put on the CPU, we put on the fan, we put on the RAM, we connected the uh, hard drive, we connected the uh, DVD device. Uh, we may have put in an extra video card, but if it was on board, like you see here, we plugged it into the 15 hole video plug. And now, all we got to do is power it up. We power it up by taking the power supply, which this is a power supply. And as you can see, it mounts into your case on your computer, or you could have it free from the case. And these are the various power connectors. Now, there's only three kinds of things you're going to want to power up. One is the motherboard itself by plugging the big plug into here and the smaller auxiliary plug into here. The second thing that you want to power after the MOBO is your hard drive. And if it's a SATA hard drive, remember, we said that the SATA power is going to look like the big L, so it's going to look like this. In real life, it's going to look like this because it's going to be a slot with a little L on the end of it. And the third thing you want to power up is your DVD or CD or CD burner. And uh, the DVD plug is a standard type of power plug. It looks like this. In the old days, the floppy drives, which people don't use anymore, looked like this. This is a common power plug for a DVD. And the older hard drives also still have it as well. Uh, if you want to connect to the Internet high speed, there is your Ethernet or LAN plug right here. If you still want to use the old uh, modem telephone, here's the modem right here, and you connect the modem by taking it and plugging it into this PCI slot. So the most likely thing to plug into a PCI slot is a regular old dial-up telephone modem, which this looks like. And then you actually plug it in right there. Folks, everything is powered up, and you are ready to now start your computer. And you start it by going to this little area here on your motherboard called the panel area. A lot of people call them the idiot wires because none of them are necessary for the computer to operate. But they are the ways that your case, your ATX case, connects to your ATX motherboard. And they'll have two wires for power two wires for reset, two wires for the lights that blink when your hard drive uh, uh, goes, and then two wires to tell you that your power is on, or the power LED, the hard drive LED, the reset LED, and then the actual power wire. And sometimes there's a little plug there for speakers. Sometimes a sp tiny speaker is mounted onto the motherboard. But the most important thing is the thing that says PWR. And if you look closely up here, you'll see all these little codes. Because if you don't want to put your thing, your motherboard, and all your drives into the actual case, then all you got to do is find the little two pins that say PWR and short them. Touch a screwdriver to those two pins for a brief, tiny fraction of a second, and then your computer will 
go. And the reason why you'll know it's going is that the fan is now going on your CPU fan. And if there's external fan plugged into something else, either one of these motherboard power plugs or one of these little additional power plugs from the uh, power supply. And also another thing that you'll notice is that there's a little beep, one little beep from the tiny speaker that's mounted on the motherboard. It'll go beep just once. That means your system works. And you can now install your Windows or Vista or anything you want to do. And believe me, folks, it'll work 100% of the time. I've built several hundred computers, and uh, they have never failed me. I've always made little connection goof-ups here and there, uh, but nowadays, remember, it's impossible to blow up your system. The nice thing about building your own computer is that you could buy all of these parts wholesale from various places. My favorite place is... Uh, uh, buy.com or Newegg are my two favorite places. Uh, Tiger Direct used to be pretty good, but now they suck. Uh, and you could generally buy the parts for about one half or one third of the price of the computer. So you could build a thousand dollar computer for about three hundred dollars as a general rule of thumb. And now that you know how to build a computer, folks, go out and do it. I thank you very much.